I posted a video yesterday about teenage apathy and I hope this answers some of your questions. The number one thing you can do is let go of all pre-pandemic expectations of your child, specifically academically. I know you and I were raised where you had to like complete school with good grades and you had to get a degree because otherwise you weren't going to be successful. Those expectations on your teenager are absolutely 100% not helpful. Number two, you need to let go of the fact that them not getting those great grades or getting into their degree or all of that, that their struggle has anything to do with you being a bad parent. Number three, listen. And I don't mean by asking them what's wrong because nothing's wrong with them. They never have been wrong, but just going to them and listening as if you could create empathy and compassion and understanding for a little bit of whatever they're going through. That's a huge help. Number four, help them set tiny baby step goals every day. Not because you chose them, help them to choose them. If it means going to bed a tiny bit earlier or getting up a tiny bit earlier or maybe showing up to a class without their camera turned on that they haven't shown up to in weeks, that's a baby step. Number five, help them get to bed earlier because if they're not getting enough sleep, their brain literally cannot function properly. Number six, help them get 30 minutes of daily outside activity or fresh air, laying on the grass, going for a walk, anything that helps get them outside. Number seven, if you have anything to do with their nutrition, do what you can to get good nutrition in them as possible. I know it's really hard with picky eaters. Number eight, get them whatever mental health support that they need, but don't force it on them. If they're already at a really low point, they may not be ready for help. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it can come across as you trying to fix them and rescuing them. And it's more about you rescuing yourself because it's really uncomfortable to watch your child go through this. So let it be on their terms and in their way, even though you provide a list of names or options that you're willing to help with. Number nine, contact the school. Let them know that they need a week off. If they're drowning, they need a full stop break for them to just breathe. And you and your team set up what that week off looks like to help them start to recuperate and get a little bit of air so they're not gasping so much. And most of all, love and encourage them for where they're at without making them wrong. Remember, as much as you want to help them, trying to fix feels like being attacked when they are just coping as it is. Love them where they're at, encourage them, and let them know that they will always be more than a number, a letter, or a percentage to you.